What's up guys, Brett here with my YouTube channel, Good Talk Gaming. We're looking to play some more Artifact Casual Phantom drafts. Trying to hone my skills a little bit. So, I did a draft, my first draft. Um, I thought we drafted well. We played as well as we could with the information that we had and the experience that we had at the time. And, it, you know, things didn't work out for us, but it was still very fun. Uh, and it was fun enough that I decided I have a buddy who streams... Uh, artifact content pretty regularly. His name is Pro Lane. Catch him on Twitch. And we decided to do a draft together. So we did one together, and unfortunately, there were some serious audio issues. You basically can't hear him. Um, we did the entire draft. It was crazy fun. An awesome deck that we put together. And we ended up coming out with a pretty, uh, pretty good record. So I was excited to upload that. I went to upload it this morning, and yeah, discovered the audio issues, so I'm pretty bummed about that. But uh, thanks to kind of going back and forth with him and learning a bit more about the game, I think I'm in a better position now to draft solo, um, and I will definitely be getting him back to do some more uh, two-person drafts. And I thought it was a more fun format because there was a lot more um, useful commentary uh, to go along with it, and he kind of helped answer some of the questions that I had for my first series of videos. So I'm still debating whether or not we should upload. Um, you know, basically it'll be like me talking to myself. Uh, so if that doesn't bother any of you out there, that's that's pretty much essentially what it would uh, come down to. Whether or not you could sit through an entire draft with me sounding like I'm talking to myself, um, but still the draft content being good enough to actually enjoy the, the, uh, the gameplay. So I'm looking here at the Ogre Corpse Tosser who did some work against me in a previous draft as well as the Bronze Legionnaire uh, getting two good early minions in the same color um, we had a very tough fight in our last draft against a, a mono red deck and that would be a cool thing to throw together if we were able to um, Zeus here I think is a pretty good hero uh, Thunder God's Wrath is a very strong spell once you get to 7 mana. Um, alternatively, we could... I see here Mists of Avernus is also looking like a pretty strong card. Modify allies with plus 1 attack before the action phase as an improvement. Um, I do like grabbing 2 red creeps here first. And also the two green ones down here, they're very low cost and very strong. I could see grabbing them. But let's take the two red ones and see what we get here. So now we get a Stone Hall Elite. Okay. That works very well with our first two picks. And these are all three very uh, decent blue cards. Assassin's Apprentice is a pretty strong minion as well. Or Creep rather. Pick off is nice. Deal 4 damage to a unit in any lane. Or slay to condemn a creep. So I think it's between Assassin's Apprentice, slay, or pick off. And I think we're going to take pick off. Uh, it's more versatile than slay. And we're already rocking 3 creeps. And we can look to be some sort of blue black deck. Or I'm sorry, red black deck. And that could be fine. Checking this out here. I think we just take two more very cheap, excellent creeps. So we're like loaded up on excellent, uh, excellent creeps. And now we can take something different. So Necrophos is a hero that I haven't played with yet. He has the Heart Stopper Aura. Let's double click him. So his passive ability is Sadist. Modify Necrophos with plus one health after an enemy neighbor dies. Okay. That seems good. It's a modification, so it's permanent. If we can just keep him on the board long enough, he does work. And his card is the Heartstopper Aura. Modify a black hero with deal two piercing damage to this hero's enemy neighbors before the action phase. That's very strong. I mean, you just turn around and give this to him on turn two. And, uh... Yeah, he just starts wiping the board and increasing his passive. 
So I don't know in the meta where he fits if he's like a top tier pick, but I'm going to take him. Goes with our first couple picks. And I've had a lot of success with Trebuchet getting this down turn one or even uh, turn two. And having this do a lot of damage over the course of a long game. And then also the Hourglass is a pretty oppressive card to play against. Um, if you could pick this up early in the game as kind of your first big purchase. You can kind of lock your opponent out of the game. But all that being said, uh, I think Dimensional Portal is the strongest card in the pack. But we are going to take Trebuchet here and maybe try and stay two colors if that's possible. And we're passing on Lion. Um, yeah, Lion appears to be one of the weaker one of the weaker heroes. And so here we have the option between taking Fight Through the Pain, which is a decent card. It's very cheap. Um, but I think we're going to take Book of the Dead and maybe try and experiment with that. Strafing Run, Cleansing Rite probably won't make the cut. Another Zeus, but I'm seeing here, okay, so this is what I'm looking at. Um, these are two very powerful green cards. The Selfish Clerics, they just kind of stay on the board. They're almost like mini Bloodseekers. There's also a Blink Dagger, which I've seen do a lot of work. And this Horn of the Alpha, which I think just dominates the late game. But having said all that, um, Ironfall Goldmine gave us a lot of gold in our previous draft, my buddy Prolane and I. Uh, you get this down turn one, and it generates you know, 12, 15, sometimes 18 gold for you over the course of a long battle. And it's just solid. Alternately, we could also take, and this is what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to take two of these Vandals. And... We have a ton of minions. We have Trebuchet here, uh, Ogre Corpse, Tosser. They all kind of work together. This could be wrong, guys, for sure. Um, it could be right to take two Selfish Clerics. could be right to take one of these and a Gold Mine. Um, but let's try this. And Ursa's a good hero. Another Assassin. Gank. We could have a third Selfish Cleric. That seems strong. But I think here we're just going to take Ogre Conscripts. I like it. These are also very good cards. Uh, New Orders and Smeevil are Master. I've had them played against me to great effect. And here we go. So we get... Oh wow. Hero's Cape. 16 health. I'm going to take the Gold Mine and I'm going to take the Legionnaire. Our deck is looking very focused. Let's take the musket. And we'll just take clear of the deck. I would love to know in the comments, guys, what do you think about my picks? Uh, in the last draft we did, we used a Baden. And this guy is a house. He just stays on the battlefield. Um, very difficult to get rid of. Sucker Punch seems good. And we'll, I don't think we need another Book of the Dead. Let's just take another clear of the deck. And Hellbear Crippler seems fine, as well as the Pike. So the Pike is a nice cheap item, or weapon. Venomancer. Huh. I don't know where Venomancer fits on kind of the ranking of strength. But um, what I'm looking at here is combat training, ogre conscripts, and another vandal. And I think we could just be like a super beat down red, black, lots of uh, creep type deck. In my last draft, I had two fractured timelines. We never got to get them both online in the same lane. Um, but we did get to play one at a time. And I like to think that it, it attributed to some of our success. So let's just take two more great, uh, very efficient creeps. And here, okay. So 
If there's anything I've learned, it's that Disciple of Nevermore wins games. And with the amount of creeps that we have, it's probably just an auto pick. Phase Boots and Blink Dagger do somewhat the same thing. And Trebuchets kind of lends towards our triple um, Oglotti Vandals plus uh, Ogre Corpse Tosser. But I would like to have some combat trainings at some point here. And Sorlacon. Okay. I need to read some of these because I'm not sure what she does. So let's check her out. Um, she does 4 extra damage when attacking a tower. She just kind of has decent stats. Allies deal plus 2 damage when attacking a tower. So yeah, she kind of fits in perfect with the theme we have going. And Bitter Enemies is not a card that I've seen before. So let's check it out. After the combat phase, remove a charge from Bitter Enemies. Before the action phase, if there are 0 charges on Bitter Enemies, deal 6 damage to both towers. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. Uh, if it hurts both of us, I'm not interested. I think we go for another assassin. And we get another chance at it anyway. Um, I'll take it here. And I don't necessarily want a broadsword. We can take it though. I don't see us playing Dirty Deeds at all. Wow, two of these. They're rare. Stun a hero until they equip an item. I mean, you could potentially stun a hero for quite some time. Um, and if we end up in green for some reason, even Intimidation I know is a pretty decent card in green. But, I mean, we just caught... Well, we caught... We caught two un, uh, caught unprepared. So, that is quite good for us. So, here we have Ristol Emblem. 4 health and minus 2 armor. Okay. It's very cheap for 4 health. Um, I'm looking at taking Beastmaster as our second red. Beastmaster does a lot of stuff. We uh, we had some very hard games thanks to Primal Roar. I'm not going to spoil anything in case I decide to upload it one day, but... Boy, did that make things tough. And uh, as much as I want another Bronze Legionnaire... Uh, Burning Oil did a ton of work against us one game, and I kind of wanted to try this out. And I think it's a unique enough effect that we're going to take it. Yeah, we'll hope to, uh, to get some more similar cards. Another Hellbear Crippler. If there is an allied red hero in this lane, all heroes have plus two cleave. Hmm. Interesting. Golden ticket. Get a random item from the secret shop for nine. So it could be good, could be bad. Return an allied hero to the fountain. Escape route. That looks pretty strong. Let's take that. Also, this Legion standard bear could be good for us considering how many dudes we have. Interesting. Let's try out Escape Route. Let's take advantage of the fact that we're getting some cool rares and try and use them. So, Hip Fire, I like, and we can take a Maul here. Check out the Soul of Spring. Modify a hero with after you play a green card. Give this hero and its allied neighbors four regeneration this round. So, not bad. And now we have a chance to take something like Plate Mail. Arcane Sensor. Okay. Another Sucker Punch. And Obliterating Orb. Nice to have. If this was magic, I would say it's nice to have in the sideboard. And a last pick, Steam Cannon. Um, we had one in our last deck as well. Um, we only got to use it once, but we used it to pretty great effect. So here we have a chance to take our final hero and a red hero at that. And Legion Commander, I think, is pretty good. I don't know how she ranks, once again, in the kind of tier list of heroes. We have a chance to take another Burning Oil and potentially give a tower something like plus four Retaliate, which I don't know how you beat. Um, but our top end is looking a little light. If you look here, we're good on like threes and fours. But So I'm going to take Steam Cannon. 
and wish to have something like burning oil, trebuchets, disciple of nevermore, those type of effects. Uh, more of those in our deck. So nice. Okay, time of triumph. Modify allied heroes with plus four attack, plus four armor, plus four health, plus four cleave. Wow, plus four retaliate and plus four siege. Jesus, okay. That's not a card I've seen before, but I'm glad I've seen it now. And we'll also take Stone Hall Plate, um, which is it's something that you get it down early and it gets stronger and stronger as the battle progresses. So Tide Hunter would have been a decent pickup for our deck as well. I think we can just take another Sucker Punch here. Maybe pick a fight. Blade of the Vigil. Let's take Blade. Another Hip Fire. And Furline Mantle is also decent, but let's look here. I don't know exactly what Reptile Investments does. Add a charge to Reptile Investments after the combat phase. Okay. Get four gold for each charge, and then you kill it. So you try and play this like turn one. Um, wait until like turn three or four. Pop it, get a bunch of gold. Um, you know, I could see it being good. You could end up getting 16, 20, 24 gold out of it. But at, at that point, it's like the end of the game. So instead of taking that, I'm going to take the Furline Mantle. 8 health is a lot of health for, for that little... Okay, check this out. Trebuchet and a turret, which I also like. So two good improvements near the end. And unfortunately, two cards we can't play. Alright. So something I didn't know and didn't quite understand and... Uh, and my first ever draft that my, my friend Prolane helped me to understand is that this dictates um, where or which three heroes appear on the battlefield first, then round two, then round three. So we want Necrophos down early, as well as Legion and probably Ursa, and then Beastmaster followed by Sorlacon. Sorlacon's kind of like our, we need her to, to hurt uh, towers. We don't necessarily want her down first. And Ursa has Enrage. So the sooner we start negating armor, the better. And Legion Commander is just a good uh, like first turn brawler with Retaliate and things. Alright. Okay, now we start. So we want both of our Bronze Legionnaires, that's for sure. We wanted to try out Escape Route and Burning Oil. We'll hold off on Trebuchet and Assassin's Apprentice. Hmm. We have a lot of good minions. So Iron Fog, there we go. Let's take a Hellbear, at least one. We wanted our Stone Hall Elite. And we might play two Sucker Punches. We'll put in one for now, uh, but we certainly wanted both of these hip fires, the turret, all three vandals, and pick off. The ogre corpse tosser, the ogre conscript, both steam cannons, and the triumph. So we're looking pretty heavy on the fours here, and now we want to add stonehall plate, stonehall pike. Furline Mantle, so that's one of each, and we still have room for plenty of stuff. We can take, hmm. we can take a Plate Mail, a Red Mist Maul, and a Book of the Dead, so we have two of each now. And I honestly would like to have another health item. Take that blade and the musket. So we're at nine and I think that's probably about fine. And then whatever gaps we have in this we can pick up from the random items of the shop. So we want to put in about three more cards here. I think we can put in one more sucker punch. One more crippler. and an Assassin's Apprentice. So that puts us right at 40. And I think now we have the choice. So do we want to throw in even more units or even more 
um, combat effects, and I think we do. I think we want to go a bit over 40. Um, in Magic the Gathering, so, which is what I'm very familiar with, limited decks are made up of 40 cards. Sometimes you'll see players go to 41, even 42 very rarely, but the, the closer you get away from, or the farther away you get from 40 card decks, uh, the less cohesive your deck becomes, and it's more a problem in Magic because mana is a resource that's not guaranteed. Uh, but in this in this game, I feel like it's a little less risky. Um, as long as your your curve is being maintained, mana is a guaranteed resource that we increase every single turn. So it really comes down to how are you altering your curve in my mind. So adding something like even three trebuchets here is lowering our curve, which means we're I don't I don't feel like we're actually losing that much. Um, that much synergy, that much cohesiveness by going three cards over, because the cards we're adding are essentially one drops. Um, I don't think we want to add all four, and I mean we could honestly add the untested grunt assassin's apprentice over those. And that's definitely worth considering. Perhaps taking out two of those and adding the grunt as well as the apprentice. So now we have two apprentice, a grunt, and our drops are looking very low. And now we still have the option of playing trebuchet. And I think this is fine. Let's uh let's register this. Call it good. You know what? Let's take obliterating orb as well. We have now we have one consumable and there are definitely some powerful improvements in this uh this game. Let's register and look to find a match. And I'm going to do my best not to misplay for y'all. Playing a couple hours last night definitely helped to uh, to get my head in the right place for this game. Triple Enchantress, double Kefe the Bode. Triple Enchantress. So I played an Enchantress last night. So I know that she can regenerate herself and her nearby allies. Seems pretty strong. So this is kind of the beauty of our deck, and it's that we have the ability to uh, to play things very early, and we could change if he passes here. We could change. Ooh, rough. So now we're killing the minion. That'll increase uh, Necrophos's health by one permanently. Nice. And that leaves Enchantress all alone in that lane. So Ursa's going to start eating people. And we have the ability to duel. And I think we're going to duel. Neither one will kill each other. But we'll take away his armor for the rest of the game. And Urso still comes out ahead, um, killing this minion here. And we'll have Enrage next round to keep him alive. I like that a lot. Or to use on Legion Commander potentially to help us take out this Enchantress. Two gold, won't be able to buy anything, that's for sure. Would like to get that Traveler's Cloak down. Potentially on Necrophos or Ursa. So where do we want him? Let's put him in the, uh, the left lane to give ourselves the option to play the most variants of cards. I'm imagining this Enchantress will go down in the center lane. To provide regen to the big boy, Kefe. Or Keef? Keef? Kefe? Not sure. The whole stupid Donald Trump meme thing. It's got me saying Kefefe. <laughs> Probably Keef, though, if I had to guess. Alright. So at the moment, we seem to be killing Enchantress, unless our opponent does something about it. And 
And now we can drop something like Keen Folk Turret. And any lane we want. Potentially the rightmost lane. This is good. So now they have four armor. Interesting. If we give him plus four attack, I still don't think we kill. Let's give Heartstopper Aura to our Necrophos. Nice and early. And that's going to be difficult for any any low tier units to sit in front of him. And we can even put Ken, Keen Folk Turret down in front of him uh, soon. Yeah, we want to save and rage here to save our Ursa. It's basically just keeping him alive for an extra turn. I'm also kind of fully expecting our opponent to try and save that Enchantress as well. Lucky that this Keef is also attacking the minion. So a lot of wasted DPS there. I can fight when I have to. Okay, she gets an extra two attack. No big deal. We're gonna save Ursa this round. But still very much in danger for next round. And we don't have anything we can do here. Just kind of hoping that he'll pass. We'll pass. We take out an Enchantress. Legion Commander stays on the battlefield. And we have some decent gold. So yes, we're taking a heal there as well as a cloak. And now we have the option to start doing some serious siege damage. And I think we're going to place her here. Yeah. I think we're going to try to win the left and right lane. Another Keef going down in the left lane. And I think we'll have the ability to summon a boar this turn or perhaps the next. Call of the Wild, a loyal beast. Okay, so not quite yet. So if I'm understanding Heartstopper Aura correctly, we should get... There we go. And because they die, we heal. So this is this is a pretty powerful uh, series of things for us. And I think we're going to play Keen Folk Turret here as well. So we picked up Assault Ladders. Which is nice. We can also throw down a Vandal. We could go Burning Oil. Or Keen Folk Turret into Burning Oil. And then I feel like after that we have this, this side of the battlefield on lock. Let's see what our opponent chooses to do. And of course, will Keen Folk Turret kill the Enchantress? Um, or at least put her so that she dies to, uh, to combat damage from Beastmaster. For the glory of okay. Does this do piercing damage? It does. So we could just instantly kill him. Should we so choose? And we have to remember we have the ability to heal as well as increase health. I kind of want to increase and heal our Legion Commander. Because I feel like she's going to be key to winning the right lane. But we certainly don't want to... Um... Mm, it's a tough choice. If we use it here, uh, we guarantee to kill her. But if we use this here... Our Necrophos doesn't take any damage and also gains one health. Mm, that might have been a waste. No. No, he would have taken the damage. Um, do we burning oil as well? That's kind of the question. No, I don't think we do. Uh, we should kill her before the next combat phase regardless, thanks to Heartstopper Aura. And we could put Burning Oil in the center lane and just kind of wreck him. But the regen seconds remaining. from her is going to be rough. Yeah, I think we just pass. We'll save our resources for another lane that we're not quite winning. And I think I'm going to Fountain Flask our Ursa. That'll heal him for 8. We'll see what our opponent does. 
I mean, right now, he's just eating minions. He's saving our tower from taking damage. And he's making it so that if our opponent wants to win the mid lane, which they certainly are, are winning it currently, they're going to have to put in a lot, more, a lot more resources into doing so. So let's see what they do. Interesting. Okay. Ursa's back. So when we get to this, we can play Vandal plus Assault Ladders. Oh, I'm sorry. Salt ladders plus burning oil. So I think this is fine. Let's give the cloak right off the bat to Legion Commander. I'm ready to fight. In case they have something. We want to... Burning oil. As well as, let's get the Vandal down. I never thought I'd fight alongside the Bronze Legion. Nice. So depending on where they deploy, um, assault ladders is going to be a nice, a nice drop for us. Yeah, we'll take a we'll take a card draw. And they have a buffed. Enchantress to play. I wouldn't be surprised to see them put her down in the left lane because they are certainly going to be losing uh, that Enchantress to the Heartstopper Aura. It's a big decision, yeah, that, that's what I thought. Nice. Okay. We can summon our loyal pet, which we can look at here. It's a 3-3 with one armor, and it modifies attack. We have lots of good plays here. We can draw a card first, see what we get. We can use our Keen Folk turret to kill this minion. I'll do what I can. I'm here. Another plus one armor. Okay. Well let's let's draw a card, see what we get. Another Heartstopper aura. Interesting. I don't think we can give double Heartstopper auras, though maybe we can. Now I'm looking to Take that minion out. Once again, we're buffing Necrophos and preventing him from taking damage and doing more damage to the tower. So now we can also assault ladders. Victory is a foregone conclusion. So that's adding four damage right now. And if we want to play Legionnaire, unfortunately, we have to play it here. And then it just takes damage from the buff guy who also has regen. Hmm. I think we want to hold on to our disciple. And I think we can afford to take some damage here, but let's summon our beast. That's nice. And that'll lower his attack by one. And now we can brawn Legionnaire to any side. I understand my orders. Nice. So we've effectively kind of started to take over this side of the field. And they don't take a lot of damage thanks to that regeneration, but I still feel pretty good about where we're at. 
We have no plays for the center lane, which is fine. Once again, it's the, it's the lane we're giving up. Our Ursa is just chewing through creeps or minions. Generating gold for us every turn and making this clock very slow. I was going to say, I'd honestly be surprised if our opponent decides to play something here. Unfortunate that they decided to hit, the RNG has made it so that it's hitting Ursa. But next turn we'll have Primal Roar. Um, so depending on what goes down in front of Ursa, we, we could send these other two to a different lane. And that could just be game. Um... So yeah, we have some pretty nice choices here. I think we just heart stop our aura. Let's see, if we play this, do we just win? It's plus eight. Okay, if we play this, we just take the tower now. So let's do that. It changes the, the clock completely. Yeah. And we still have heart stop our aura next turn to give to her if that's what we want to do. But with this improvement here, I feel like our tower is safe. I do kind of wish we had oh, another heal. Hmm. I'm just going to buy the plate. The heal is nice, but I'm not sure we need it. So we still have all of our heroes. Uh, no one's died yet. Duel, okay. And our opponent has conceded. Wow. Excellent first round for us. Yeah, I think we had the win as well. And we'll play one more match. That was a pretty short round. Yeah, it feels good to win on the first round. So another mono red deck, just kind of like the one I faced yesterday. And it was strong because a lot of the, the ones that I faced... Reactive armor. Okay, I'm, I haven't fought a... Uh, I forget what these guys call Timber Saw. I haven't fought a Timber Saw yet. Ugh, that's a pretty scary card. Mm. Yeah, let's play the Assassin's Apprentice on this side. Just get some early damage on the tower. As I was trying to say, the red decks that I faced yesterday, they all had very beefy heroes. It was like a triple... God, what was it? It was a Centaur War Leader, triple Bristleback, like... Beastmaster deck, and it was infuriating to play against. And it was like a 35 minute long game. It went into like super overtime. I think things are off to a good start. That sucks. And there's nothing we can do about that whatsoever. Um, we're going to modify Bristleback. But I mean, that was, that was pretty awful for us. We don't have a lot of our early drops. And there's really nothing we can do here. No gold for us. But we can play Bristle uh, Beastmaster. And I think we're going to play Beastmaster in the rightmost lane. Because we... Or maybe in the left lane. We don't have any way to save the Legion Commander. And I feel like we're just going to give mid to a growing Bristleback. Yeah, and I expected that. 
So we're still kind of staying at parity. Nice. Okay, Primal Roar and Duel. And Vandal. Let's play our Vandal here. me until it's too late. Hmm. Okay, that stun is rough. We have two of that in our deck, I believe. Can't do anything mid. Kind of hoping our opponent would overcommit to mid. There's no point whatsoever to casting duel. So we'll pass. You could potentially have something to save the spin. But yeah, I was gambling on that not being the case. Scroll of Town Portal. Let's take one of those early on. And we are going to play both of these in the rightmost lane with that one minion. And start to look to start taking that lane over if at all possible. Okay, that was a nice draw. So was Sucker Punch. So we could stun him. Or we could hip fire and ensure that it dies. It'll deal three. Thanks to its armor. And then it dies this turn. And I think that's the play. Don't you get it? I'm toying with you. Now let's pass. Okay, and another Whirling Death. That seems like an extremely powerful ability. And I think here we're going to bring him out. And we'll pass here. Opponent still has three mana to do something. Show me what you got. Come on. Two items. Okay, interesting. We are smacking uh, the tower for a decent little chunk of damage. And once again, we're just passing in the center. Okay, giving him some siege damage. That could be problematic. It does change the clock here. Plus seven damage to a tower. But I don't think we're going to lose both of our towers here. I think we're doing fine. So a timber saw in this side. Let's sucker punch him. Face me and die well. So it'll take a ton of damage. He already used his scroll of town portal. So we should be able to kill it next turn. And it having a, a negative modifier of one armor. Do we pick up another town portal scroll? Yeah, I think we do. Uh, it's super strong against a timber saw, whose whole kind of deal is that it uh, it has armor. He'll either put both of them here, I think. Or both of them center and try to rush us down. Okay, he split them. Interesting. So I think now, honestly, we're just running left and right. We can summon this little uh, 
loyal beast here. Oh, and assault ladders too. Excellent. We can assault ladders and disciple this turn. Yeah, I like that. That'll ensure that um, this tower goes down this turn. Steam cannon is going to be pretty sweet. We can put that in the uh, the rightmost lane. For the glory of okay, that may change some things. The jungle protects its own. And let's see what the uh, the math shakes out to once we're done here. We honestly could do double assault ladders. But that only gives us four more damage. So we're going to disciple here. Which is an easy kill. And then I think we're going to scroll a town portal our Necrophos out of here. Here we go. Tower's exposed. And we can look to play most of our strength now in the, the right lane. I highly doubt they'll play anything here. Ready to pick a fight. Okay. I mean they're buffing they're buffing a hero that it doesn't change the clock this turn. They still need, um, I think, four turns to take down our tower there. Ooh, and here we have a pretty nice little choice. I think we just want to play Ogre Conscripts and get that winning for us. Assault Ladders is strong, but we don't need it this turn because we weren't attacking the tower. And next turn we'll have the option of Primal Roar or Steam Cannon, or Duel and Assault Ladder, something like that. But we're going to kill him and modify him again with another uh, negative on Fury Swipes, which feels strong. And now we just really want to overload this lane. Okay. Still doesn't kill him. Well, that trades. So, I mean, it's a three for one. I'm okay with that. And now we have some, we finally have some decent gold. Maybe we can get a good item. It's a bit late in the game for a stone, uh, stone hall plate, but we'll take it. Hoping to get something we could also buy for six. But we'll just take another scroll of town portal. And honestly, I mean, we're doing so much damage in this lane. Yeah, we're just, we're going to win the left lane. We're, we have a two turn clock here. And I think we can modify that even more. We'll, we'll put down another assault ladder. Could also primal roar. No, we're not, we don't have a blocking... Uh, hero there. Yeah, the Vandal plus another Assault Ladder. That seems pretty good. I will face our enemies head on. Yeah, I'm really not that worried about that. Yeah, let's just play the Vandal. I never thought I'd fight alongside the Bronze Legion. Our clock here is a bit ridiculous.
And we can stone hall plate our legion commander. And then next turn if we need to we can duel something. And I think there's no point in letting Necrophos die. Yeah, it, I mean it straight up accomplishes nothing. So let's pull him back out. And he essentially buffed this guy for nothing. And now because there's no one in front of him, we deal increased damage to the tower. And this minion doesn't die. This all feels very strong to me. I'm trained in all forms of combat. Okay, Blink Dagger. He's going to send him to another lane. Which... I don't think he's going to save him. I think we've got this in the bag, guys. It's going to be a quick 2-0, I feel. Yeah, I mean, we're not trying to win in that lane at all. We're going to take this tower next turn. And I don't think there's anything our opponent can do about it. They're not playing blue, so cards like Annihilate and such don't exist. Unless they can add, like, another 60 damage to this lane. Which, if they had brought Sven over, and then they had some cards, you know, some awesome card that I don't even know about, maybe that was something that could have happened. Okay. Cool, cool. I think here we just play our Steam Cannon. They made it easy for us. We'll just kill Sven again. I, it really doesn't matter at this point. I think the game's over. And that should be our opponent conceding. Excellent. So, Salta Lucia, thank you for the excellent game. Being a good sport. And thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, my name is Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. I hope you enjoyed these two quick matches in the draft portion from a guy who's honestly still a bit of a noob in the game. Um, but I had a lot of fun. And probably this weekend, I'll look to do another two-person draft with my buddy. And I hope you enjoy the kind of the commentary that goes back and forth, our card evaluations and things like that. Um, I think it's fun. I think it can be insightful. And yeah, I hope you learn a lot from that. And we'll look to do it again this weekend, I'm sure. Um, and I'll be uploading this daily until this is finished and then on the weekend we'll have the two player draft so some solo play during the week weekend we'll get some two player drafts going for all my uploads and I think that'll kind of be the schedule for a little while until I either burn out on artifact or no one really wants to see it on my channel you know either or uh, either way I'll probably be playing this in my, in my free time I'm getting quite fond of this game so alright guys without any further ado thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.